Welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Robin. I garden in Zone 6 in Northwest Connecticut. Um, if this is your first time joining me, thank you so much. I thought we would start talking about, uh, you know, the year is winding down. So let's talk about uh, how we're going to start, you know, uh, overwintering some of the things we want to save. Um, I have a new greenhouse this year. I'm not sure if it's going to still be too cold. Um, a lot of my things are going to go in the garage like they always do, but we'll take a walk around and I'll show you the things that I'm going to save. So if this is your first time, welcome. Uh, if you're a current subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. So before I start, I thought I'd uh, show you some drone shots of the garden. This was just taken the other day. Um, we've had so much rain and so much wind. It's been very hard to get the drone up. Um, so I did manage to get a few shots, not too much. And at this point, I'm gonna get ready to start cutting things down, cutting things back. Here's a view of the front of the house. Um, and then uh, this is coming down the side. Uh, this is the bed in the back with the raised beds. And just another overall uh, view of the backyard and a uh, close-up of the Hawthorne bed. So the first thing I should talk about that I'm going to uh, save, um, not over winter, but save, is all my herbs. So things like thyme, chives, tarragon, parsley, basil I make into pesto, um, rosemary. So if you haven't started saving your herbs yet, you might want to think about it. Um, I'll link the video where I showed you what I do. I use Margaret Roach's method from Away to Garden um, to save most of my herbs. One of the things that I'm definitely going to try to overwinter, I did it last year too, are these caladiums. This is Carolyn Wharton. Um, and this canna uh, is a peach colored one, toucan coral, I believe it's called, from Proven Winners. Um, and um, let's see what else I think I'm going to overwinter. I have over here a container. A begonia. Now I'm not going to try to overwinter this plant, but I am going to try for the first time maybe to take some cuttings of this and see if I can propagate this um, so it'll live. Uh, we'll see. Who knows? <laughs> um, let me see what else. Let's take a look around. So some of my dahlias, this is labyrinth. This is Michaela Miranda. Some of them I absolutely love, and I am going to um, overwinter those tubers. Um, but some of them, you know, like I've had two flowers off of Giggles. Um, some of these have not done really well, and some have, you know, done pretty well. This is Cornell Bronze. Um, so I'm going to be a little more selective this year on the ones that I'm actually going to overwinter. I'm not going to just save everything. Now, over here, my calla lilies, I don't know, they did not do well this year at all, and I've had them forever, and I have had no problem overwintering them. So I really have to decide if I'm going to save these or not. This is just Dahlia Perfection. This is called My Hero, and Right before these open, sometimes they are just so beautiful, the buds. Um, so again, I'm going to be very picky about what I save and what I don't save. This is Dad's favorite, and this is always a pretty good one for me. So I'll probably save this Dahlia. Um, got a bumblebee happy over there. So I think um, I just don't want to save everything. I feel like not everything did really well this year. I've moved a lot of these things um, just to, over here just because they were spread all over the yard. It was getting to be a pain in the neck. Um, not everything did well in containers this year. I always am fighting the voles. I got to come up with a better solution, I guess, or just stop planting some of this stuff. Sorry about the mowing in the background. Um, so the... Uh, elephant ears have done amazing this year. They're three times the size they were last year. They're definitely not going in this bed next year, though. Um, they, I can't even see the blue kazoo spireas. I have an a, aurelia back here that is now blooming, 
and I can't even, I can't even see it. But they're certainly gorgeous, and I had no problem overwintering them uh, last season. So they'll probably just get pulled out of the ground. I did just pop them up and put them in the basement, uh, in the garage last year. I don't know if I'll do that again this year, though. But look how pretty with the, with the dew hanging on them. And they certainly are beautiful. There's no two ways about it. I mean, they really are. They're, they're so striking. But they're too big for this bed, and I don't know where I'm going to put them. While I'm over this way, look at this Brandywine Viburnum. Just, I have two plants here, and the, the berries start turning blue. This is such a cool plant for fall and it gets beautiful foliage color. Um, in the spring, it has flowers. Just a really great plant. If you've never tried it, you might want to consider this one um, as a newbie for your garden next year. I've mentioned a couple of times that I really don't do too much with um, annual mums and asters. So this, though, is a perennial aster. This might be purple dome, I'm not sure. Um, I like these better. They, they give you more, you know, four season interest. They're, you know, the green and now they're, now they're popping up their colors. The blackberry lily is definitely full of berries at this point. Let's see if I can really get these in for you. really pretty. Um, the grasses are going crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got stuff I've got to pull out of this bed. I'm going to pull out some flocks. I've got gorgeous Amsonia string theory uh, back in here, and it's gotten gigantic. I also have a Baptisia down in here, but I have some flocks I'm going to pull out. I really got to corral some of these grasses, but I, I just love the seed heads. These things are so beautiful. Um, you know, they sway in the breeze, um, and actually some of them have not been too bad, even though we've had nothing but pouring rain. It, it's just been crazy. My firelight hydrangeas are putting on a ton of new growth. I actually cut off a lot and they have seriously responded. Um, I was actually trying to cut them down, um, <laughs> and so they rewarded with me with way more growth, but the color is really gorgeous. Um, unfortunately, I thought these were firelight tidbits when I bought them, and they're not. <laughs> and they're way bigger for this location than I wanted. However, look at the Kusa dogwood, completely covered with berries. So pretty. And we still got Agastache going there, and now the Viburnum is all changing color. Here's one of my perennial mums. This one is called Powder River. Really pretty white with a like creamy yellow center. And I still have tons of uh, Celosia, uh, Dara, and Feverfew, Bachelor Buttons, and my potatoes are really still hanging on. My second batch of potatoes are doing great. Um, like I said, the Dara is really doing pretty, and I even still have some amaranth. Zinnias are still doing great. Denver daisies are still doing great. Still have lots of snapdragons. And check out the color on Pinky Winky. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. I actually don't think I remember a year that's as gorgeous as this.